Hey, this is Ryan, uh, Ryan from GBSE.com. In this video, I'm going to show you five great tips using the Blendif slider in Photoshop. So to get started, this question comes up a lot. So I'm going to show it a couple of different ways. How can I make the background transparent? Is there an easy way to make the white background transparent? And the answer is yes. And it's using the blend if function. Now keep in mind as I bring this into Photoshop, this is not the only solution, it rarely is. It's not necessarily the best quality. The best will still be using masks and channels, but this will get you really close to the end goal. And then you can always use mask just to refine this. So how it works, I've just brought this image in and I'm going to go layer, layer style, blending options. And here we have, I'll make the image bigger. It's a pretty small image, but make it bigger. And here you have blend if gray and belief beneath that we've got red, green, and blue, since this is an RGB image. And then it says this layer black to this layer white. So if this layer is white, we do not want to reveal it. So we just pull this slider in and we can hold the alt key to separate that and it creates a smoother transition. So something like this and we're done. Now we've gotten rid of the white background. So in the next one, we're going to do the same thing, except that somebody asking, how do I blend a black background? How do I remove a black background? I'm going to again, copy that image bring it into Photoshop and I will show you it's really the exact same thing except we pull from the other side but it's good to keep doing things over and over again until you really drill it into your head so this layer black and we just pull that in and make this bigger so you can see and I can hold the alt key again to separate that out and get it to a nice smooth point so now that we understand the basics, let's do something a little more advanced. So I'm going to not save this. And then we're going to look at the next question, which is alpha transparency, remove background. How can I remove this kind of yellowish green background while there's a bottle and everything? So I'm going to copy this image, open it in Photoshop, do the same thing to just get it to a point where I'm able to use it. All right, now because this is a yellow background, I'd rather not work in RGB. Uh, yellow and blue are tied together. It will work, but it's not the best option because of how RGB handles contrast. So this one would be better to do in LAB color mode. So let me go image mode and switch this to LAB color. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing, in, uh, excuse me, layer, layer style blending options. If you've been following my other videos, you'll know that blend if and yellow and blue are in the B channel. So now I can just say, if this layer is yellow, we want to get rid of it. So you can see, I pull that in, separate it out. We really want to make sure we're just really removing the background. So probably something like that, maybe. Uh, I'll put it right there. That looks pretty good. Click OK. Now this still has a bit of a color cast. So I'll go ahead and fix that as well. Come in here, do a curves adjustment and same area in the B channel. Then we're going to use the eyedropper and I'll put a point here and we can see that point is at 50. So we want that. Let me make sure that's on there entirely. There we go. So at 50, we want it to be closer to zero. So I'm just lowering that B down and pulling the yellow out. So we might not want it entirely at zero, but maybe, I don't know, five, six. So right now it's at seven and that's fine. So I'll close that. But now you can see doing that affected the red ink. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is image, or excuse me, layer, keep saying image, layer, blending options. And here's a bonus tip for you. And we're going to go, we're on the curves when we're doing this. We're going to go into the A channel, which is where green and red exist in LAB. But instead of saying on this layer, we're going to say if the underlying layer is red, we do not want to see this adjustment. So I can just pull this in, 
Let me move this over, I'll do that again. So as I pull this in, you can see right about there, suddenly we no longer see the adjustment. And let's again smoothen it out. And now you can see all of the red is back to its normal color. So I'll click OK. And you can see the adjustment got rid of the yellow cast without affecting the red ink, thanks to the blend if. So all right, there's some good tip for you. Let's move on to the next one. So this question, the person asked, how to superimpose an image on all dark areas of another image? For this basic one, you could probably just get away with using screen. But what they really wrote was they want it to be very according to the shades of black from lighter. I don't know why they wrote pregnant. I guess they mean like more pronounced image superimposition. Uh, not the best wording. I didn't write it. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use these two images from Unsplash. So I will copy this, bring it into Photoshop, and I'll do the same thing with this one right on top of that. Now, if you haven't already figured it out, so I'll just rename this and rename this, and I'm actually going to put the flower one on top. And now I'm going to say, so if the guy is dark, we want to see the flowers. If it's light, so all the sky area, we do not want to see the flowers. So I'll come in here and I'm going to go layer, layer style blending options and say, you know, if the underlying layer is light, we do not want to reveal the flowers. And I'll pull out until the sky is gone. So right about there. And then again, hold Alt to soften that up and we're done. Now I can go in and the reason I put the flowers on top is because I could go in and lower the opacity. I could still change the blending mode as well if I want. So you can do all sorts of stuff. And I could have done this the opposite way as well and said, you know, if I wanted to have it the other way, could pull it out so that it's pretty much the exact opposite and we only really see it in sort of the sky, you know, something like that. So that would have worked too, whichever way you want to do it. So that's really handy. And then you would just need to refine and mask the edges and stuff. All right, so on to the fifth and final tip. This one, there's no question for, it's just my own technique. It's going to be a trick when you're sharpening images. So I'm gonna copy this, bring it into Photoshop. There's another photo from Unsplash. And I'll actually crop this down because we don't really need all this dead space for what we're doing. Now I will go ahead and do a sharpening. So if you've watched my videos, you'll know I like to duplicate the layer, do filter, other, high pass, and just do a sharpening like that. Click OK. I did it pretty dramatically, but should be all right. Now, what you'll notice, and this is what a lot of people refer to as harshness, is this white edge that appears. So when I switch this to linear light, it looks really harsh. And that occurs not just on the edge on the outside, but even you can see it kind of by her eyes, on her nose. You can see this lighter tone, right? So now we know how to fix that. So I'll do linear light. And before I do this, this way I can show you the difference. I'm going to do a clone stamp. So this is how it looks. And I'll call this sharpen without blend. And I'm going to turn that off. And now I'll go back to this one. And I'm going to do layer, layer style blending options. And I'm just going to watch this edge over here and say, if this is white, we don't want to see it. So when I get to about here, we can see that starts to go away. And then I'll hold the Alt to smoothen it out a bit. So something about like this. And then you should do the same thing with the black. It's not as noticeable generally, but it will help. You can see right there where that kind of that dark edge appears and disappears. So we just want to pull it in and then pull that in and we're done. So now I'll do another stamp just so you can see the difference. I'll move that on top and say sharpen with blend. Whoops. So 
Here we have the original image. Here we have the sharpening without the blend. And here we have the sharpening with the blend. So you can see how that blend really makes it a lot smoother of a transition. And if we take this off just to show, so that's the original and then our final product. It, so it is sharpening. It just doesn't have the harsh edges that it would have if you didn't do that blend. So that's a great tip that you won't find anywhere else. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel.